Good morning, or depending on what you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of Voice of Radio. So today, we need to take a look at an auction which is going on at the moment, which is extremely exciting, and if you happen to be extremely rich, or at least far richer than I, it can be yours. You see, at the moment, ladies and gentlemen, there is a Pokemon trading card game booster box that is for sale on eBay. And the current price, with over six days left as I record, is £65,900. Yep, so over 65 grand, and it's still got six days left. This makes it a phenomenally, phenomenally expensive booster box. So the question is, how much is it worth, and why is it worth so gosh darned much? And the answer to the first question is, however much someone is willing to pay, we don't really know until it sells. And the answer to the second one is, a little bit longer, but we can figure this one out. You see, ladies and gentlemen, this is a booster box of the base set of the Pokemon trading card game. That is to say, the very first set that was ever released. It was a while ago now. It was, in fact, released in Europe, America, etc., the English version, on January the 9th, 1990, which was two and a half years after the October 96 release date over in Japan. That was a long time ago now. That was, in fact, just over 21 years ago. So they're very, very old, but plenty of cards are very, very old. Well, firstly, it is a sealed booster box. That is to say, it is a booster box of 36 packs, which has never been opened. Never been opened at all. Okay. And to be fair, if you have a look at the condition, it is in extremely good condition. It's not been battered and bent and all of that. It, it's just looking, you know, it's looking all right. It's looking quite nice. So that's quite good. But it's a first edition. You see, it doesn't happen anymore. They stopped it years ago. But when the Pokemon trading card game first came out, it was made by a company called Wizards of the Coast. They are the people that do magic nowadays. Nowadays, Pokemon is made by the Pokemon Company International, but back then the license was granted to Wizards of the Coast to go and make Pokemon cards. Cool. And they had first edition cards. That was that the first... X number of boxes would be made where every card was stamped to a first edition logo. Makes them a little bit rarer, a little bit more sought after. Incidentally, they stopped this because it got a bit confusing because you'd end up with first edition stock still on the shelves and unlimited stock was out. And it all got a little bit weird and awkward. But for the time, yeah. And the other thing to remember is that when the Pokemon trading card game launched, it launched to massive hype. Regular stores were getting in on this. They couldn't keep them on the shelves. They were extremely hard to get for a time. The hype was huge based on successful video games as it was. So that means that even getting first edition boxes back then for some people, and there's always exceptions here and there, but for a lot of people trying to find a first edition box was, it wasn't easy because it was just sold out everywhere. I don't know if you remember when the game launched. I do. It was not always easy to go and find yourself a booster box. But it's not just a first edition box. It is a first edition shadowless box. Which means that it contains cards only from the first two weeks of production. So, you've got this really old set in really good condition unopened. And then it's first edition, which is a very rare subset of that. Then it is shadowless, which is a very rare subset of that. And you end up with a spectacularly expensive box. Now, to put this into context, because again, 70 grand might seem like a lot for a box of cards. I mean, it's 65 now. It's going to go up quite a bit. One would imagine. But... When this launched, it was Charizard. Charizard was the one that everybody wanted. Charizard was the sought-after card. Charizard was the card that everybody wanted. Well, if you take a first edition shadowless Charizard, which isn't guaranteed to be in this box, but there's a good chance it will be, well, at the moment, there is an eBay auction selling one of those for £29,000. Now, bearing in mind, I know a lot of my viewers are over in America. So, if you want to convert 
£29,000 into American money, good old US dollars, you end up with somewhere in the region of $37,500. And that could be one card. And bearing in mind, shadowless first edition Pokemon cards, they keep value. Now, if you take something like this Nidoran, for instance, shadowless first edition, six pounds. And I know that six pounds isn't very much money, but bearing in mind, this is a random common. You're getting six of these just in a booster, just generally speaking. So there's like £36 per booster just with the commons. So let's assume you only charge this much for all of your commons. You got £36 times 36 packs. That's £1,300 just for the commons. Just for the common cards. That's how much you're going to be commanding. Now, let's be clear. This is the... What's the best way to phrase this? The cheapest, least sought after part of what's in there. Bearing in mind a single Charizard could net you 30 grand right on the spot. And we haven't even talked about PSA grading yet. Because you see, if you go ahead and send them off to a company like PSA, there are a bunch of others. Then actually all of a sudden it gets quite a bit better. Because if we take something like, again, we're just looking at random eBay auctions here. Let's talk Blastoise. I like Blastoise. First edition, Shadowless Blastoise, PSA 10. You're talking about £6,700, 13000 Australian dollars. Now, there's no guarantee that what you pull from a pack will be a PSA 10. PSA 10 is gem mint. That is to say, absolutely flawless or near as darn it. But bearing in mind these are unopened packs that have been stored in a box that doesn't have any real damage on. And if the box doesn't have any damage on, then the packs won't have any damage on. And that means it's quite likely that you're going to be able to fix this quite nicely. To get a whole bunch of good PSA graded cards. Now, this would be a gigantic undertaking, alright? But let's say, for argument's sake... You actually did grade every card in the box. And you got to pay to get the cards graded. You'd be paying a lot of money, but they would all go up by more than the value of the grading. So you would make money on it. Let's say you did. You would get a lot more than 70 grand for all of those cards. And like I say, that's assuming you don't hit a Charizard. Now, I told you that the Charizard we're looking at is being sold for like $30,000, and it's not graded. Imagine if you pulled a first edition Shadowless base set Charizard, and if you pulled a Charizard in this box, that's what it would be, and you got it graded and got a 10. Yeah. And that's kind of my point here. If you open this up and sell the cars individually, there is a decent chance of making a profit, depending on what's in there. If you open it up and sell the cards individually graded, it would take a lot more time and a lot more effort. But eventually you would probably make a fairly big profit. But here's the thing. These boxes don't generally get opened. You see, if we have a look at the eBay auction, reason for sale, the box has doubled in market value in the two and a half years since we bought it. And we're happy to sell it with that return. They bought it in October 2017 for 40,398 pounds. They have already made a 25 grand profit. And there's still six days left to run on the auction. A year later almost, in August 2018, a similar box in nearly as good condition evidently sold for 70,000 US dollars. But remember, conversion rates are important here. 70,000 US dollars is only, fi only 53,800 pounds. So we're already talking 12 grand above that. And that is in the space of about 18 months. So imagine what this is going to be like in the future. And maybe the market crashes. Maybe these only end up selling for 20 grand in the future. But as it stands at the moment... 
Would it be terribly surprising if somebody bought this, sat on it for a couple years and resold it again? Probably not. The point is, when people are buying these cards, yes, they're a huge investment. No argument here. But actually, people aren't buying these to kind of crack them open and go, oh, look, I, I pulled a Blastoise. Yay. People are buying them as an investment. And they are an investment. And it generally works out rather well. How much will it end up going for in the end? I'm going to be keeping a close eye on it. I will pop a link to the eBay auction in the description so you can keep an eye on it. And hey, maybe you're one of those people that actually does have the kind of budget that gives them 100 grand or thereabouts to drop on a box of Pokemon cards. In which case, best of luck to you. For now, I'd like to know your opinion on all of this. Is this the kind of thing that interests you? Is this the kind of thing you would buy if you had the money? Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! But be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, or you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Plays, where you can find out about a whole bunch of games that don't have Pokemon in, but are still pretty gosh darn phenomenal. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio. <laughs>